I recently published a book that asked if God created the universe. It caused something of a stir. People got upset that a scientist should have anything to say on matters of religion. I have no desire to tell anyone what to believe, but for me, asking if God exists is a valid question for science. After all, it is hard to think of a more important or fundamental mystery than what or who created and controls the universe. The universe is a machine governed by principles or laws. Laws that can be understood by the human mind. I believe the discovery of these laws has been humankind's greatest achievement. For it's these laws of nature, as we now call them, that will tell us whether we need a god to explain the universe at all. For centuries, it was believed that disabled people, like me, were living under a curse inflicted by God. While I suppose it's possible that I've upset someone up there, I prefer to think that everything can be explained another way, by the laws of nature. So what exactly is the law of nature, and why is it so powerful? Is that these physical laws, as well as being unchangeable, are universal. They apply not just to the flight of a ball, but to the motion of a planet and everything else in the universe. Unlike laws made by humans, the laws of nature cannot ever be broken. That's why they are so powerful and when seen from a religious standpoint, controversial too. If you accept, as I do, that the laws of nature are fixed, then it doesn't take long to ask, what role is there for God? This is a big part of the contradiction between science and religion. And although my views have recently made headlines, it is actually an ancient conflict. Science does not deny religion, it just offers a simpler alternative. But several mysteries remain. After all, if the Earth moves, could it be God that moves it? Ultimately, did God create the universe in the first place? I believe it's a cosmologist's duty to try and work out where the universe came from. Luckily, it's not quite as difficult as it seems. Despite the complexity and variety of the universe, it turns out that to make one, you need just three ingredients. Let's imagine we could list them in some kind of cosmic cookbook. So. What are the three ingredients we need to cook up a universe? The first is matter, stuff that has mass. Rock, ice, liquids, vast clouds of gas, massive spirals of stars, each containing billions of suns, stretching away for incredible distances. The second thing you need is energy. Look up at the sun, and you can feel it on your face. Energy produced by a star 93 million miles away. Energy permeates the universe, driving the processes that keep it a dynamic, endlessly changing place. So, we have matter, and we have energy. The third thing we need to build a universe is space. Lots of space. So where could all this matter, energy and space come from? We had no idea until well into the 20th century, Albert Einstein. Sadly, I never got to meet him since I was only 13 when he died. Einstein realized something quite remarkable, that two of the main ingredients needed to make a universe, mass and energy, are basically the same thing. Two sides of the same coin, if you like. His famous equation, E equals mc squared, simply means that mass can be thought of as a kind of energy, and vice versa. 
So instead of three ingredients, we can now say the universe has just two, energy and space. So where did all this energy and space come from? The answer was found after decades of work by scientists. Space and energy were spontaneously created in an event we now call the Big Bang. At the moment of the Big Bang, an entire universe full of energy came into existence, and with it, space. It all inflated, just like a balloon being blown up. So where did all this energy and space come from? We can use the laws of nature to grasp the very origins of the universe and discover if the existence of a god is the only way to explain it. The great mystery at the heart of the Big Bang is to explain how an entire fantastically enormous universe of space and energy can materialize out of nothing. The secret lies in one of the strangest facts about our cosmos. The laws of physics demand the existence of something called negative energy. To get your head around this weird but crucial concept, let me draw a simple analogy. Imagine a man wants to build a hill on a flat piece of land. The hill will represent the universe. To make this hill, he digs a hole in the ground and uses that soil to build his hill. But of course, he's not just making a hill, he's also making a hole. In effect, a negative version of the hill. The stuff that was in the hole has now become the hill. So it all perfectly balances out. This is the principle behind what happened right at the beginning of the universe. When the Big Bang produced a vast amount of positive energy, it simultaneously produced the same amount of negative energy. In this way, the positive and the negative add up to zero. Always. It's another law of nature. So where is all this negative energy today? It's in space. This may sound odd, but according to the laws of nature concerning gravity and motion, laws that are among the oldest in science, space itself is a vast store of negative energy. Enough to ensure that everything adds up to zero. The universe is like an enormous battery, storing negative energy. The positive side of things, the mass and the energy we see today, is like the hill. The corresponding hole or negative side of things is spread throughout space. So what does that mean on our quest to find out if there is a god? It means that if the universe adds up to nothing, then you don't need a god to create it. Since we know that the positive and negative in the universe adds up to zero, all we have to do now is work out what, or dare I say who, triggered the whole process in the first place. Down to the atomic level. And right down to the subatomic level. And you enter a world where conjuring something out of nothing is possible. At least for a short while. That's because at this scale, particles such as protons behave according to the laws of nature we call quantum mechanics. And they really can appear at random. Stick around for a while, and then vanish again. To reappear somewhere else. Since we know the universe itself was once very small, 
smaller than a proton, in fact. This means something quite remarkable. It means the universe itself, in all of its mind-boggling vastness and complexity, can simply have popped into existence without violating the known laws of nature. In a nutshell, do we need a god to set it all up so that the Big Bang could... bang? I have no desire to offend anyone of faith, but I think science has a more compelling explanation than a divine creator. 